for staying with us on Y254 Business Tuesday. And tonight, if you're just joining us, we are talking about events management. We're just trying to see probably for people in the events industry, how has COVID-19 affected their businesses? How have they still managed to make sure that they're paying their bills, they're taking care of themselves and also taking care of their families? Probably for a future uh, pandemic or a future tough time like today, how are they planning to re-strategize and make sure that they are not as affected as, as affected as they have been affected. Now we also try to look at the fields uh, and challenges that are in the events industry. And to help us talk about this tonight, we have Lady Obura, who is an events coordinator and founder of the LJ uh, events. Thank you very much. Um, Lady Abura for being with us tonight. Talk to us across our social media platforms. Contribute on, our dis on the discussion that you're having tonight. And Y254 channel, you can also reach me at Patricia Mugioki. Welcome. Uh, Lady Abura, welcome to Y254. Uh, welcome to Business me. Tuesday. And the first question I would like to ask is, because as I was interacting with you before the show, I noticed that you studied communication. And how did you find yourself in the events uh, industry and how long have you been there? Well, as you mentioned, yes, I studied communication in Daystar. Mm -hmm. And Daystar is quite broad, so mm -hmm. you get to do very many courses. Mm -hmm. So in my third year, I did a course in PR mm -hmm. where we were made to do a whole assignment on events. So in my group, my group was the best. Mm -hmm. Then I noticed maybe I do have something in this. When my son turned one, I did his whole event. Mm -hmm. I coordinated getting things from different people. I never used one company. Mm -hmm. I would just Google or go on Facebook. I see this one has a castle. This one maybe has this venue. Mm -hmm. So when all my guests came, they asked me who was the planner mm -hmm. behind it. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that actually I didn't have a talent in it. Mm -hmm. So three months after his party, I legally opened a company. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how long have you now been in the events business? I've been in the industry. The company has existed for exactly seven years, mm -hmm. but has had business for six years. Because mm -hmm. the first one year of business, I did not have a single client. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. So when we talk about events management, for someone who is watching us tonight, and all they see is they get to walk into a reception that is very beautiful, the colors and the themes are so well coordinated. What, entail, what does it entail when we talk about events management? Well, events is glamour. You have to have a niche for good things. You have to be very meticulous. By meticulous, I mean, you have to be detailed. You have to understand that why is this petal sideways? Why is this uh, vase not like the other vases? Mm -hmm. But apart from all that, are you a people's person? Mm -hmm. Are you able to walk into a room and relate with people? Mm -hmm. Are you able to see their energies and feel it? Mm -hmm. Are you patient? Because mm -hmm. as an event planner, you really have to be patient because mm -hmm. you're dealing with people. It's people who are hiring you for the event. Mm -hmm. Also, you have to have the ability to just be calm because mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure. Clients mm -hmm. are very, they have a lot of pressure. They want you to do this, do that at this time. So if you're equally a very impatient person and not calm, mm -hmm. it can't work because mm -hmm. you're going to clash with your clients. So even if you have the niche and the eye for good things mm -hmm. and you're not a people person, you're not calm, you're not relatable to others, it can't work. Okay. Uh, you've mentioned that you need to be calm. You also need to be patient. Have you had moments where a client told you, I want this? And you can clearly see whatever it is that this client wants and so, so much wants does not really work. It's not going to be perfect. So how do you communicate with your clients to try and show them, I really appreciate uh, your thoughts and your opinions, but I w for me to give you the best event, you also have to let me in as, in, as an event planner. Hmm. 2018, I had a client. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget her and her husband because they paid me the best. Mm -hmm. But one, they called me last minute, which we do take. Mm -hmm. And the things she wanted, with all due respect, had to be imported, some mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. Was she paying well? Yes. But she was not understanding. Mm -hmm. And the beauty about the event business is that we all work together. Mm -hmm. That's why you have suppliers, coordinators, 
because if I don't have this castle, I'll call this other company. If I don't have this minder, we mm -hmm. work together. Mm -hmm. All of them are all telling me, I'm sorry, but these things have to come in. Mm -hmm. So with such clients, you have to reach down mm -hmm. below their level, mm -hmm. meet with them on a face-to-face -face level, mm -hmm. and give them a different alternative that would work as best as what they want. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even if it means losing a profit margin or a certain amount of money, mm -hmm. it's best because you want to stay in the business. Mm -hmm. But that's why I say you have to be very calm mm -hmm. and patient mm -hmm. because clients are very demanding. Okay. Yes. Uh, we have had COVID since March which means like we've not been able, people are just starting to have events now. And these events are not events, you, you can't say planning for an event now in 2020 is the same as you were planning for events in 2019. So how has this uh, probably, how has it affected your business and how have you managed to still stay afloat with that? Well, in terms of being affected, mm -hmm. there's no money. Mm -hmm. And I think, okay, there's no money for everybody. But you see, for us in events, we depend on you people mm -hmm. to hire us, to feed us. Mm -hmm. So there's been no money because everybody is very afraid. They have to take care of themselves, their families, no social gatherings and everything. However, we've had to take very, very stern precautions, which mm -hmm. is even making most of our clients not want to have us. Mm -hmm. In the sense that now you, for, for you to get a venue, before you just go to a restaurant and say, hey, on Saturday I'm having a 100 guest birthday party. Mm -hmm. Now you have to get a permit. Mm -hmm. Getting a permit, it's you as the event planner. You get the permit, you go to the station or the chief of that area, mm -hmm. it has to be written down. After that, we have to list down our suppliers and get permits for them. Mm -hmm. Before, we didn't have to go through all that. Yeah. Then there's this restriction of number of people. Yeah. You know, we are Kenyans, we are Africans. A party of 50, everybody wants to bring a plus one. Nowadays, there's nothing like plus one. It is like if it's 50, it's 50. it has to be 50. Mm. And it's very, it's even tough for you as an event planner to be at the entrance of an event saying, excuse me, your name is not on this list. Yeah, and having it, to it gives you there. a certain image because <laughs> your clients won't do that. Mm -hmm. They will make you do, do that. So yeah. you are carrying that image. Mm -hmm. mm, apart from that, we've also had to deal with masks, mm -hmm. which is tough because when people are eating, you're just there looking at them. You're always sanitizing people. You mm -hmm. go around the whole event, you're sanitizing. And if it's somebody's house, a week before the event, they have to sanitize the whole house, mm -hmm. fumigate it. And then on the day of the event, we as the planners have to sanitize the whole house. Mm -hmm. So for some people, as much as they may have the funds to hire you, when they think about the whole process, they don't think it's worth it. So mm -hmm. it has really brought business right behind for us. Okay. Uh, when we talk about uh, events, we see you go to an event and you're you're amazed and really you fall in love with how that work has been done. And you go to a different event and you're like, okay, wow, what happened here? So what makes uh, a client choose company A and company B? And this is for people watching us tonight and they're thinking about starting an events company. When they are planning an event, what are they supposed to consider to make sure that every other time they get referrals and that clients will always keep on knocking at their door? Referrals, it all goes to customer service. Mm -hmm. Do you know there's a reason as to why somebody would rather do KFC mm -hmm. and not maybe Galitos, yet one is more expensive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just the customer service. Mm -hmm. How you speak to your client, how you relate to them. Mm -hmm. If your meeting is at 8, mm -hmm. as a planner, be there by 7.45. Mm -hmm. If you tell a client the cake will be there this time, let the cake be there. If there's going to be a delay, communicate. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I've realized that there are clients who'd rather spend more mm -hmm. because of how you communicate to them. Mm -hmm. People really fall in love with personal, interpersonal relationships. Mm -hmm. It's always not all about money. It's about how you package yourself. Mm -hmm. In this industry, packaging is the most... It's your strongest asset. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll tell anybody who wants to try this. Just mm -hmm. packaging. The money will come later. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, be a people person. Mm -hmm. Your attitude, your pain, your drama, leave it at home. Mm -hmm. When you're meeting your client, paint your face for that 30 minute uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. For the wedding, paint your face. For the child's birthday, paint your face. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, go home and deal with your drama. Okay. Uh, Brandon? 
when we talk about branding in events management, what are people supposed to make sure they follow or is in their branding package as a company? I talked about this with three fellow event planners before coming. Mm -hmm. Branding is so personal. Mm -hmm. It goes with who you are. For instance, like for me when I began, it was basically children because it's my son who inspired me to be a party planner. Mm -hmm. So for me, my branding was themed parties. Like mm -hmm. everything I do for my clients is themed mm -hmm. from everything you eat, see, mm -hmm. like it's beautifully themed. Mm -hmm. For others, maybe they went for this wedding and they fell in love with the deco and then they decide for me it's just weddings. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to branding, it's all about your ideologies mm -hmm. and what you think mm -hmm. and feel. It's very different. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to start and they're thinking about their brand, think about when you're thinking about events, what do you want? Are you good to be, are you like able to be in the whole field where you can do like rora shows and uh, weddings and bridal showers and bachelor parties or are you just into this themed sector so branding really just comes from the heart because mm -hmm. it's very personal okay uh what has been your lowest moment or your lowest uh, experience or event as for the years that you've been in business okay my last moment was when, okay, usually a client pays you 75% mm -hmm. for booking purposes and then we do the setup. After the setup, there's a difference between planning an event and coordinating. Mm -hmm. Basically, in my company, we plan and coordinate. Mm -hmm. Coordinating means I'm there with you from morning to evening. I run your errands. I make sure like food is there on time, mm -hmm. all that. So for this client, they basically only wanted planning. They gave the 75% well. However, on the day of the event, they were very sketchy and I had another setup to go to. So because they have guests, again, you have to be respectful. I said, okay, sir, um, after your event, kindly send the balance. Mm -hmm. And until today, my client is still sending the balance. And you see, I have a team mm -hmm. and that's none of their business. I have to pay them. Mm -hmm. So with that event, I had to use money from my pocket to secure my team mm -hmm. until date, I'm not happy. Okay. Uh, these are some of the challenges that I believe people get to face uh, with work and everything. As you wind up, I would like you to talk about mentorship. Did you have someone who probably mentored you as you were starting this? And have you considered probably uh, mentoring people uh, who are willing or who have shown interest to join the events industry? My first mentor, Fun Park Events, her mm -hmm. name is Rini. Mm -hmm. Lovely girl, we are age mates. I heard her for my son's first birthday. Like she helped me with, she was a part of those people I collected, but she stood by me that day mm -hmm. and we clicked and she took me through everything from even decor. You know, I didn't have to go to a school from that. Mm -hmm. She taught me how to arrange everything. Mm -hmm. Then uh, three years later, I met Clara of mm -hmm. Dream Reality and she taught me how to do the invoices, the crediting, the funds. Mm -hmm. So you really need mentors. And the beauty about this field is that it's so big. There are so many people in this field. We all need each other. Mm -hmm. Will I one day want to do this? Yes. When I get into weddings, mm -hmm. I would like to actually have people to mentor. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Our time is actually finished but it was a really nice having you and i believe that people were watching us tonight you've been able to learn something and if you're hoping to start an event uh interest uh, an event a company i'm sure that you've taken one or two thank you very much for joining us my name is patricia morioki we meet again tomorrow as we talk about gender roles and the society thank you very much have yourselves a very good night